Let's talk about uh, how to draw a residual plot in the R software. As we learned in the previous courses, when we perform a linear regression analysis, we want our residual plots to randomly and uh, independently distribute around the zero line, as you can see here, the zero line. Each dot in this chart represents a residual value. As you can see, they all randomly and independently distribute around the zero line. But uh, in other cases, after your analysis, you find uh, certain particular patterns exist in the residual plot chart. The four charts on this slide shows you some examples of uh, problematic residual plots. For instance, in the first chart, when x value increases, you have a, a scattering pattern exists in the chart. In the second chart, when the x value increases, you have a, a very obvious U-turn pattern exists. In the third chart, you can find that uh, most of the residuals exist below the zero line. Very few of them exist above the zero line. This is a very particular pattern as well. In the last one, you have a, a up and down pattern exist in the residual plot. We don't want uh, the residual plots to have certain patterns. Why? Because residuals refer to the factors our analysis model didn't consider. Obviously, in one linear regression model, your model will not consider all influencing influential factors. So some factors your model didn't consider. If the residual plots have certain patterns, that means the factors your model didn't consider can strongly influence the predicted value. If you have a patterns exist in the residual plot chart, that means your model, your current analysis model, is not complete and comprehensive. This implies that your analysis model is not in good quality. We want the residual plot to be like this one. There is no particular pattern exists in the residual plot. This is the criteria to evaluate which residual plot is good, which pro residual plot is problematic. But uh, the next question is, how can we draw a residual plot in the R software? I want to use the example to show you. The data set I will be using in this example is called the fitnessapp.csv. You can download from eCollege or download from uh, this video's description section. Let's download the data set and then import the data set into the R software. Let's create a variable to hold the data frame. Let's call this fitness. And then let's use read.table function to import the data set. The file name is called uh, fitnessapp.csv. And then the separator should be a comma. Header equals to T. Let's take a look at the fitness data frame. Let's use head function. This is the data frame. What we care about is the vector names. What I want to do is I want to use incomes, team visits, and the state to predict how long the user will use the mobile app. So the dependent variable in our case should be hours, and the independent variable should be incomes, team visits, and the state. Let's build the linear model. Let's give the analysis result to a variable as well. Let's call this fitness LM. This is a variable that holds the analysis result. Let's use the LM function. So let's build the linear model. It will be hours, and then a tilde sign, and then incomes plus team visits plus state. Data equals to fitness. We got the results. Let's take a look at the results. Let's use the summary. 
then let's type in fitness LM. This is the result, right? In the linear model lecture, I already explained how we interpret the coefficient estimate, p-value, and the r-squared value. Some classmates asked me a good question. How can I visualize the estimate coefficient? How can I put the, the coefficient values into a chart? That's a good question. We need to use a new package to do that. It's called the COEF plot package. Because COEF plot is an external package, if you want to use it, you have to download the package first. Let's download it. It's called the install.packages. The package name is a COEF plot. Press enter. And then you can choose uh, any mirror side you like. For instance, USA TXY. And then click OK to download the package. Once this is finished, you have to start it. Just type in library and then COEF plot. Press enter. Now we can create the chart to show coefficient estimates. Let's use a COEF plot function and then parentheses. Between parentheses, you want to type in the variable name that holds your analysis model. In our case, it should be fitness LM, right? Press enter. Now you can see all coefficient estimates are listed on this chart. Let's compare this chart to the numerical data report. Let's say the first one. The first one for intercept is about 0.78, right? So if you look at the blue dots for intercept, it's between 0 and 1. It's around 0.8 this point, right? So from this chart, you can find a similar results as well. Let's use incomes as another example. Incomes from the our numerical report, the estimate is about 0.05. So if you look at the chart, this blue dot is very close to zero. By using the COEF plot function, you can list the coefficient estimate for each independent variable in a chart. By the way, COEF has nothing to do with the residual plot we are about to draw. I just want to introduce this package to you so that you can visualize the coefficient estimate for the independent variable. If we want to draw the residual plots, we need to use the ggplot2 package we learned in the previous class. So let's continue our scripting. Let's go back to the R software. We need to initiate the ggplot2 package first. So let's type in library and then ggplot2. This is the package name. If you haven't downloaded this package, simply type in install.packages and then type in ggplot2 between the parentheses to download it. Next, we want to use a function called uh, fortify to take a further look at uh, our linear regression analysis results. This is what I want to do. I want to type in head. And then between head, I want to type in fortify. And then another set of parentheses. In the inner parentheses, I want to type in the variable that holds the analysis result. The variable in our case should be fitness LM, right? Let's type in fitness LM inside of the inner parentheses. And then press enter. Now you can see, besides the independent variable name and dependent variable name, we have uh, several new vectors. What we care about is called the dot fitted and the dot resd. Resid represents the residual. Dot fitted represents the predicted value based on our analysis model. We want to use these two vectors, dot fitted and the dot resid, to build the residual plot chart. We want to use the ggplot function to draw such a chart. I want to give the chart to a variable as well. So in the future, I don't have to keep typing in ggplot function. Let's call this uh, resid plot. 
Let's give this uh, chart to a variable called uh, receipt plot. And then I want to type in ggplot. Do you still remember how to use ggplot to draw a chart? We need to specify three parts of for ggplot, right? The first one is AES. Which one you want to use as a, a x variable? Which one you want to use as a, a y variable? Between the inner parentheses, we want to type in x equals to dot fitted dot fitted and then a comma and then y equals to dot resid these two vectors are from uh, the new vectors we created here dot fitted and the dot resd this is how we specify the aes parameter right and then a comma Next, we want to specify the data parameter. Data equals to the variable that holds your analysis result. Equals to fitness lm. Please note that this shouldn't be fitness because fitness is the original data frame. It doesn't have the analysis result. We give the result to a variable called fitness lm. So please pay attention to this. And then after the parentheses, let's type in a plus sign. Since we want to draw a residual plot chart, we want to have uh, dots in the chart. So the first uh, component we want to show is geom point. Let's type in geom underscore point. By doing this, we can draw the residual values as dots in the chart. Next, we also want to specify the zero line in the middle, right? We want the residual plot chart to randomly and independently distribute around the zero line. So we want to specify the zero line as well. The function to specify that is called a geom underscore h line. So let's type in geom underscore h line. H line represents the horizontal line. So you want to specify which one you want to show as a horizontal line. After each line, you want to type in a set of parentheses. And then between the parentheses, let's type in y intercept equals to 0. This means on the y-axis, we want to select y equals to 0, this point. And then from this point, we want to draw a horizontal line. This is how you draw the zero line in the residual plot. If you want to continue, you can add other components into the residual plot. For instance, you can add labels for the x-axis and the y-axis. So let's do this. Let's add labels for both axes. The function for labels is LABS and then parentheses x equals to, and then two double quotes. Between two double quotes, you can give any string type of values as a label for the x-axis. Let's call this fitted value. This means x-axis represents the predicted value from your model. And then a comma, y equals to, simply call it residual. Basically, we have finished the, the residual plot chart. Let's press enter. If you want to see the chart, just type in the variable that holds the comment to draw the chart. It will be resid plot. Press enter. And then if you minimize the script window, you will see a new chart show up. This is the residual plot for your current model.